Friday and it is September 3rd. We don't have any meetings to tell you about today, so we'll just jump to who's on the show. And we are visited by Carl Rondazzo, who is here on behalf of the United Maintenance and Construction Committee. And he's got a United update for us, so we'll sit down with him. And uh, then we'll just go ahead and jump right to our weather. It, we did start out with some uh, overcast this morning, and I anticipate that happening throughout the rest of the weekend. Um, and then we are going to start a heat up. Um, gosh, it's going to get pretty warm on Saturday. So today we are looking at 8365, mostly sunny after we burn off our morning fog. And then Saturday, 8868. Then we get hot, 8969. I know it's only a, a difference of one, but. Man, 88 and 89 is pretty warm, and Monday we're going to go to partly cloudy skies, 86, and we start another cool down on Tuesday. But who's to say we aren't going to go back up again starting the rest of the next week, 84, 70 on Tuesday. Our sunrise, oh, if you're traveling the state of California, take a look at these numbers. Local beaches, 79, 67. Santa Barbara, 81, 64. San Diego, 80, 68. And the rest of the mountains are looking pretty good, too, all in the 80s with overnights in Tahoe, 45. Mammoth, 40 and Big Bear 50. Palm Springs is 108 with an overnight of 84 and uh, surpassed Las Vegas. Las Vegas is 103.80. So pretty warm when you travel out there. Our sunrise this morning was at 627. Our sunset will be at 713. And thank you, Joel, for sending in this fantastic aerial shot of Palm Springs. So you can see how dry it is out there. Now, if you would like to send a photo of someplace that you've traveled or would like to travel, Send us a high-resolution photo to Laguna Woods Village TV at gmail.com. All right, when we come back, we will sit down with Carl Rendazzo. So stick around. More than 30 years, Active Care has been providing the highest level of care to residents with Alzheimer's or other memory loss. We specialize in memory care. That's our sole focus. With three levels of care and an engaging activity program, Active Care enhances life for every resident every day. Our newest community, Active Care Laguna Hills, will open this fall. We're now accepting reservations. Call 949-877-8233 to learn more. Pickleball is the fastest growing sport in Laguna Woods, and during the day, hundreds of pickleballers play on the association's seven courts. But at night, that number is greatly reduced because there are only four lighted courts. Light the Night is a community improvement project, and the Pickleball Club has stepped up to assist GRF with funding. You can help by making a tax-deductible donation of any size through the Village Community Fund. Go to villagecommunityfund.org and click on the Light the Night link for more information. Watch HGTV. Netflix. The 
Looking for a change of scenery? You don't have to play golf to enjoy all that 19 Restaurant and Lounge has to offer. From our delicious breakfast menu to our delectable lunch and dinner specials, at 19 Restaurant and Lounge, there is something for everyone. Relax with your friends and family and take in the beautiful view from our spacious patio. Or enjoy a cocktail and appetizer in our lounge. 19 Restaurant and Lounge is a great place to socialize, enjoy a meal, or simply take in the view. Join us seven days a week and experience Laguna Woods' exclusive dining experience. Welcome back. As I mentioned, we have Carl Randazzo here, who's on behalf of United with an update on the Maintenance and Construction Committee meeting. Yes. And this is your last time. This is my I last time. I can't believe time. it. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, and nonetheless, we'll, thank we'll you We'll see coming. what happens, okay? But at this particular point in time, okay, I'm going to say it's my last time. So I'll, go, right. I'll get into that a little bit uh, as part of my little uh, uh, presentation here, okay? I'm, I'm putting a presentation together to make sure I didn't forget anything, okay? So that's, that's what I need to do. Okay. Uh, I don't speak extemporaneously as well as I do from a written word, okay? So that's, that's okay. Me. So anyway, uh, we had the uh, MNC committee meeting on August 25th. And at that meeting, uh, <clears throat> we addressed a range of issues. First off, we uh, reviewed the project log, which lists all the major work projects and programs that we are working on in United. This is in addition to the day-to-day -day maintenance activities. At the meeting, we went through a thorough review of these items since I felt it was important that we have a snapshot at the end of the board year, which is coming up in October, since the new board will be seated in October, and this was going to be my last MNC meeting as a member of the United Board and as the chair of the United MNC Committee. Mm -hmm. But I will provide more on that later. Getting back to the project log, we reviewed the following activities. Item one, uh, change out of the pushmatic electrical panels. This is a long-term project that is being funded over a 10-year period to change out 2,750 Pushmatic brand electric panels to a different design and manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Pushmatic breakers are operated, as the name implies, by pushing in on the breaker. The circuit breakers that we are changing to are just like your electric light switches on the wall. They, to they toggle back and forth from left to right within the circuit breaker panel. Mm -hmm. These are the type of breakers that are used today. This change out is being done because the pushmatic breakers <clears throat> have been found to be not as reliable as the toggle type breakers. This year we're on schedule to change out approximately 275 of these breaker panels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Item two was the prior to paint and paint program. We are currently in a 15 year cycle to paint the outside of a building we just recently changed to a 15-year cycle from a 10-year cycle in order to save money. Mm -hmm. It was proven based on warranties received from the paint company and with prior to paint protocols in place that we have put into place that we could increase our durations to 15 years and thus achieve our goal of saving money. The prior to paint program works in tandem with the paint program by repairing structures before we just paint over a problem. Mm. We are on track to complete all the buildings that are scheduled to paint this year. Can I ask you something about the paint that you're using? Is the paint, um, is it an upgraded kind of paint so it does last longer? No, it was the same paint. The only thing right now is when we, when we, uh, the MNC <laughs> committee went to the manufacturer and said, listen guys, we would like to change to a 15 year paint program. Will your paint still keep, will you, will you be able to keep the warranty at 15 years versus the 10 years oh, that I we see. currently have? Okay. And they said, oh yeah, no problem. Okay. So as a result of that, based on the fact that we got them to warrant it up to the 15 years, the paint still the same paint, then we were able to go with that program. Okay. And now with a 15 year cycle, we're able to now save a little oh, bit of money. Oh, that's great, that's good. Okay. And, and part of that, as I mentioned <laughs> here, is the fact that before this, when PCM was here, they just painted over everything. Okay, <laughs> if, it, if it doesn't walk, you paint it, okay? <laughs> and now we're basically going through a process of making sure that the actual undersurface of all of those things are not dry rot or, or deteriorating or what have you. Mm -hmm. So we do all of that work first, then we paint over it, okay. 
And now, you know, it will last for 15 years. That's awesome. Uh, the epoxy waste line remediation program was then discussed. And the cast iron waste pipes were used in 1960s and 1970s, in, and in our units, obviously. These are all waste lines. Over time, these pipes have a tendency of rusting out and deteriorating. As a result of this deterioration, leakage will occur, which obviously will need to be repaired. In order to preclude this, we are applying epoxy lining to the interior of the pipes before they deteriorate to the point where they are starting to leak. Mm -hmm. This process is less costly than replacing all the metal pipe with plastic pipe, which is what is used today. In order to fix this problem, we are on a long-term program to line all the drain pipes in United. We budget so many feet of pipe per year until all the drain pipes will be coated or replaced. We are currently on track to line the pipes that are scheduled to be completed in 2021. Due to cost and other factors, we could not line all the drain piping in United in a one-year time frame. That is cost prohibitive and also <coughs> time prohibitive. Right. Therefore, this continues to be a multi-year program until they are all done. Okay. So everybody has to understand that. Okay, why aren't we doing them all in one year? We just can't. There's just too much pipe and not enough people to do that work. Mm -hmm. And then the money is just extraordinary. Mm -hmm. uh, exterior fencing was then another program that we were discussing. And we have a program in place to replace 300 feet of exterior barbed wire fencing with shepherd's crook fencing every year until all the fence is replaced and united. Mm -hmm. The 300 feet is the minimum that the city of Laguna Woods has mandated that United replace on a yearly basis. Both Third and GRF also replace 300 feet of their fencing yearly, so it's a combined total of 900 to 1,000 feet of pipe that is a uh, fence, excuse me, that is replaced every year within United uh, within Laguna Woods Village. Mm -hmm. The fifth item in the programs is items that are uh, middle, they are, these particular programs are the foundation repair program, the walkway lighting program, and the building structure program. These programs are re, re performed on an as needed basis and budgeted, budgets are provided yearly based on what we anticipate the needs to be in the following year. Mm -hmm. Some years we do not need to affect as many repairs as anticipated, and so that money is used for the next year. So that was it on the, uh, on the uh, project log. Mm -hmm. We then went on to talk about the Charge Ready program. And the, next, the Charge Ready program is a Southern California Edison program where they will subsidize some of the costs associated with installing Class II electric vehicle chargers within the village. Mm -hmm. We currently were looking at installing some of these charges within United. However, after reviewing the arrangements of the deal with SCE and looking at the locations for where these things could be located within United, the committee decided that we should cancel any applications for locations within United. These locations were not considered to be in our best interest due to a number of reasons. Two of these reasons for this decision are as follows. The first, locations where some of the EV charges could be located in United would cause the loss of a minimum of four to 10 parking spots that are currently at a premium within United. Mm -hmm. Anybody knows, and third's mm -hmm. got it even worse. Second is that SCE deal requires that we sign up for a 10-year arrangement. Mm -hmm. Based on these two issues and some others, the committee felt that it was not cost effective to place the EV charges associated with this program within the confines of United. It was thought that it would be better to locate these EV charges at a certain strategic clubhouse parking lots. <clears throat> these clubhouse parking lots are centrally located within United and will be a better fit, so we voted to recommend to the board to cancel the application for United and when the board meets on September 14th, they will vote on our recommendation. We're also requesting that GRF accept these locations at various strategic clubhouses within the, within the uh, uh, various different locations, so like, like Clubhouse 3 maybe, or Clubhouse 1, and various others within 3rd and what have you. 
Well, right, because those areas are probably not used all the time. And, and that's correct, okay, and there's more parking, uh, parking spaces available in those locations. Okay. And there's more room. Yeah. Uh, and also the, the length of, of, of cable that would have to be used to get it from the meter inside the building to the location is less in those locations than it would be in the other locations. So there's cost issues. Uh, there's a, a number of things we discussed. Okay. Our next topic was appliances. <coughs> and you're probably asking yourself, appliances in the MNC <laughs> committee? Well, as everyone hopes, hope, I, everyone I hope knows, if you have not altered your manor within United, the appliances in your manor are owned by United and are maintained by VMS. Mm -hmm. Within VMS, the appliance management falls under the purview of the maintenance and construction department. That's the reason why we discussed it in that meeting. Mm -hmm. At the meeting, VMS explained the process that identifies when appliances are replaced. First of all, appliances age out based on a statistical formula that is used. <clears throat> For instance, as an example only, the normal life of a refrigerator is calculated to be 20 years. If the United-owned refrigerator breaks down before the 20-year mark, then it will re be repaired by VMS. If it cannot be repaired, then it will be replaced by a similar type of refrigerator unless the resident determines that they want an upgrade that is on the list of approved refrigerators. If the resident chooses an upgrade from the list of refrigerators, then the resident will be informed of the price difference between the upgrade and the standard, and the resident will need to pay the price difference for the upgrade and the standard and the resident will, uh, at this same process will occur at the refrigerator's end of life at 20 years. That is, when the resident submits an application to change out the appliance at the end of life, they will, and by the way, this has to be done by the resident. If it comes to the end of life, you have to request the change. <clears throat> they will be offered the standard refrigerator or will get to choose from the upgrade list and then pay the difference. The same process is true for all the other appliances that are owned by United. If you think that you have a United-owned appliance that you think has reached its end of life and you are looking to change it out, then contact resident services. Also, with regard to this topic, we then discussed if there was a backlog in ordering, in the ordering process of appliances due to the pandemic. Right. VMS responded that for certain models and types, the manufacturer is experiencing delays. And I know that from personal experience with people that have contacted me. So the residents should be aware of that if they are in the middle of this process. Please also be aware that this only applies to United-owned appliances. If you have an alteration in your manner that included an appliance, then the change out of that appliance is on you because your appliance no longer belongs to United. Gotcha. We also then went on to the topic of gutters and downspouts. And it was pointed out that in next year's budget, we are going to try to prioritize the change out of the gutters and downspouts on Seville models. If anybody looks at a Seville, you'll see that the roofs on the Sevilles are substantial. There's a large surface area. And as a result of that, when rain falls down, they go into these tiny little gutters and they gush out. Mm -hmm. The Seville has a large surface area roof and the gutters that are currently installed on these roofs are undersized for a major rain event. Mm -hmm. As of now, the Seville's will have the priority for gutter change out next year. Okay. As I addressed in my opening remarks, this was my last MNC meeting as a member of the United's Board of Directors. At this October United Board meeting, they will be sitting the new United Board members, and I have chosen not to stand for election for various reasons. At this time, since this will be my last time on TV6 as the chair of the United MNC Committee, I would take, and by the way, I, Elsie did the same thing, and then all of a sudden she came out up here next week, but <laughs> we'll see what happens. At this time, since this will be my last time on TV6 as the chair of the United MNC Committee, I would like to take, make the following comments. 
I have been a part of the United Board and MNC Committee for three and a half years. It has been an honor to serve this community. And now it is time for someone else to take on this role. In all that time, I have tried to use my experience as an engineer and a project manager to provide my insights to the VMS MNC department to make things better and find less costly ways to address the way we do business. I feel that I have helped and hope that the next person can do the same. I wish the next board all the best. Now, as a public service announcement, please be aware that the next MNC meeting is scheduled for October 27th at 9.30. Uh -huh. Please come and join the meeting and get involved. I may not be there, and not as the chair anyway. Complaining without doing something to help is not really a good philosophy. Remember the old adage, if you are not part of the solution, then you are part of the problem. And I believe that you should try to be part of the solution. Thank you for your time. Yeah, well, that, that certainly is well said. <laughs> so, you know, thank you. It's always been a, a joy. But like you said, Elsie said she was Elsie's leaving too, exactly. and she came right back. <laughs> so you might just come right back. You never know. Exactly. But thank you so much for the information. You're welcome. And All thank right. everybody for the time that I've been able to serve on the board. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. When we come back, uh, we will have some general announcements of what's going on here in the community. So stick around. Primary care is our first interaction with the healthcare system, but most people don't visit their physicians due to long lines, waiting periods, and moving from lab to lab. At Cure Medical, we bring healthcare straight to your doorstep. Our modern upscale mobile clinics provide services such as prevention and wellness plans, annual exams, lab work, blood tests, and more. Give us a call today to learn more and schedule your next appointment. Cure Medical, close to home, far from ordinary. Hello everybody, I'm Lisa Hart and today I have someone you all know, Brittany Tui with me in studio on behalf of Village Television. Well Brittany, so nice to see you in person, how are you? I'm doing great, how are you Lisa? Good, and you know, most people have talked to you on the phone many times or have come into Village Television and of course see your beautiful smiling face, but today you are here to give us some announcements for Village Television. Yes, we have a couple of announcements to make. The first one being that Village Television is now open by appointment only. Mm -hmm. Our hours are 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Mm -hmm. If any of our residents wish to make an appointment, we kindly ask that they call 949-597-4295. Now, before they used to come into the studio, but that's not the case anymore because obviously you just mentioned appointment only. And uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday is the time that they'll be able to contact you for appointments. Now, what happens on the off days of Tuesday and Thursday? Lisa, we will still be answering the phone, but appointments are only Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Okay, great. Good to know. All right, well, a really big announcement because uh, everybody is very excited to know that something is coming back to Village Television TV 6. Yes, we are so excited to announce the return of the trading post. Yay, Yay. everybody's super excited. Yes. And you know, a lot of people sold a lot of stuff on there. And so now there are some new things that we're doing there where people will not come into the studio to fill out any of that paperwork anymore. Correct. We are asking the residents if they'd like to submit a post that they do so through the online portal. Okay, so, so you're going to walk us through how that happens, and uh, you guys can follow along right here on the screen. And uh, so go ahead and just tell us how to do that. Wonderful. So to submit a post online, we kindly ask that you go to lagunawoodsvillage.com. From there, you select residents at the top, and in the far right corner, you select Village TV. Once you're at our website, you scroll down just a bit and select Trading Post. And from there, you select the orange tab that says Submit New Post. From there, you fill out the online form and at the bottom, you can also include a three photos max. 
Okay, and s select submit. Okay, now three photos max. So obviously they'll have to, they can upload those from their iPhone or an iPad, or maybe it's already on their computer. They could certainly do it that way. And then they submit it and that sends an email straight to you, right? Correct, the email comes direct, directly to me. Okay, excellent. Now, what if somebody doesn't have access to the internet, what should they do? If they do not have access to the internet and they cannot use the online portal or send me an email to the trading.post at vmsinc.org, we give them the option of calling in the ad. Okay, so if they don't go online, they can email you all the information that is asked, Correct. right? And the email that you just gave us. Now, if someone was having trouble filling out the form or they didn't know what to check or something like that, they can still call you and you'll walk them through it, right? Yes, I could walk them okay. through it or I can take their ad over the phone. Oh, okay, good. Now, if you take an ad over the phone, mm -hmm. then how would they get you the pictures? From there, we ask them to drop the pictures off downstairs with the concierge mm -hmm. and just in an envelope or um, with a note that says, attention, Brittany in Village Television. Perfect, well that's super easy. Thank you so much for joining us today, I appreciate it. Yes, thank you for having me, Lisa. You're welcome. Stay tuned for more great programming from Village Television. Our movie today is The Breakfast Club, so super cool movie from way back when, not too long ago, but nonetheless, stars Molly Ringwald and several others, and you can see that today at 2 p.m. with subtitles, 6 p.m. without subtitles, and that's brought to you by Harvard Eye Associates. All right, let's take a look at our weather before we head out to enjoy our Labor Day weekend. Uh, we are looking at burning this uh, overcast off uh, within the next few hours. And then we are looking at sunny skies, 83.65, tomorrow 88.68, Sunday hot, 89.69, Monday 86.70, and Tuesday 84.70. And uh, take a look at these temperatures if you're traveling in the state of California, and uh, pick wherever you're going, and that's the temperatures that are going to be for the weekend on the average. Have a great day in the village. We'll see you again tomorrow at 9 a.m. Otherwise, have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Hi everyone, welcome to Genesis of Laguna Niguel, under new ownership with a new attitude and an attitude to serve.